Whatever you observe, send it to school. Here's the problem. If I'm teaching a class, I may have 28 kids. I got 28 personalities, 28 learning styles, 28 developmental intelligences, and if you don't tell me about your kid, I may take all of the first half of the school year to figure out something that you already figured out. So what I suggest is that all the information you gather in step one, you give it to the teacher the first day of school. You say, look, here's my child. If you say that they have to raise their hands before you call on them, he's like a little slot machine. He's going to raise his hand, but his mouth is going to open at the same time. I know the answer. I know the answer. I know. So you're letting them know in advance. If uh, you say, well, my son, he doesn't do well in group activities. He gets too easily distracted. Or my daughter, uh, she works best when she's working in a group and they can discuss what they're doing. What I want you to do is I want you to share it with the classroom teacher K through 12. Now here's what you're going to get. Elementary teachers are going to actually look at it. Middle school teachers, depending upon what their team, how their team is constructed, whether or not it's parent friendly, they may or may not look at it. High school teachers, they typically would tell you, well, he's in high school or she's in high school. You have to help them to understand I want my child to be successful. So I'm giving you this information in hope that it will help you. But if you're not going to pay any attention to it, I'm just letting you know in advance. So if your children are not successful, you can always come back and say, look, I told you. I told you in advance about my child. That's the point that we want to have. That's what we want to do for, for our children. So we're going to move on to step number two. My child can be in a school that's not meeting AYP. But if that school has programs that's meeting the need of my child, then as a parent, I'm happy. So we're going to look at how do we identify the programs in a school setting. Um, I know that uh, some schools are very good at test scores, right? Some schools, you know, if your child goes there, they're good at test scores. Other schools, they're very, they have a lot of extracurricular activities. For example, my son's middle school, they had a Model UN team. Not all middle schools have a Model UN team. They sent their Model UN team to New York, to the UN, to compete in an international UN, Model UN competition. So that was a program that was available in his school. We made, it, we made sure we took advantage of it. Some schools have very good athletic programs. Well, if you have a child that's highly bodily kinesthetic, very good at track, a field, softball, baseball, volleyball, then that's a consideration. There are other schools where they have strong mentoring programs. That means if you have a child who needs to have more positive relationships with adults, some schools, they really have a focus on that. So you know that your child is going to be in a better environment there. Other schools, they do what you all are doing right now. They have really important parent training. They don't just have an event once a year. Some schools, there's once a month or every couple of months. So what I'm saying is that we have to look at all of the different programs and opportunities available to our children, and then it has to meet the needs of our children. So here's, here's a challenge for you. I want you to go to page 51, and here's what I want you to do. Because we're going to make sure we're identifying the right school, the right program. I want you to write down your vision for your child. Just one child. Just identify one. If you have seven, I only want one right now. Just one child. We're going to focus on one child. Just pick one. I don't care. Just pick one. Write down your vision. I want you to make sure that you include in your vision the level of academic achievement, education, talent development, and behavioral expectations in your vision. Then we're going to talk about how we take this and make sure the school is going to meet our needs. You put us in this situation as far as just writing down uh -huh. and using all of the adjectives as to what we want them to be, it becomes a little more difficult. difficult. It requires us to Think. Yes, man. Yes, man. I feel you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, then, you know, this is something that you just can't rush I know. Through because I know. I'm sitting here. I know I want him. Uh huh. But I want him to be I actually. Uh huh. Okay, so I'm just one time. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do it. If he can't do it, I mean, he can do it. He may act like he can. Yeah. Because I know my child. So I've been yeah. doing it before. And then she was like, well, he just in kindergarten. Yeah. You don't have to be so aggressive anymore. I know. Anymore. Yeah. And I said, well, I'm, I'm trying to raise a successful child here. And she was like, she was like, you, this is your only child. Ain't you? And the school kind of like, they thought I was crazy in a way because they looked at you. We could tell you this is your only one. Okay. This is your first one. Let me ask you a question. And, and it's kind of like downplay, but I still am involved. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> When your son, if your son doesn't get a job, is the kindergarten teacher going to support him? No. 
if he doesn't graduate from college, is she going to say, well, you were in my kindergarten class 18 years ago. You can come back and stay with me. <laughs> no. Okay, so then you have to, let, also, here's, here is how you answer all of that. Let me say this for the benefit of everyone. The reason I put that information up this morning, only three, particularly African-American males, only three out of every 100 will graduate from college, those who start kindergarten, is that that's what you show the kindergarten teacher. You say, look, I don't know what these other 97 parents did, but my baby will be one of the ones who graduate from college. And if that means that I have to come into the school every day and affirm that he is great, that he's a genius, I'm going to start in kindergarten, and at 12th grade, I will still be affirming it. And so it's important for you to communicate your vision to teachers and your children. And here's some of the important points. Number one, academic performance. Do you want your children to get A's? B's, or whatever. Because whatever it is you want, that's what you have to say. I expect A's, B's, and if it's whatever, then just say whatever. And here's the challenge as parents. When our children go through their developmental stages where they are rebellious, oftentimes as parents, we give it to them. We say, fine, whatever you decide to do. You, and this is what we say, you will pay for it. No, you will pay for it. If your child takes six years to get through a four-year program, you will pay for it. If they come out of college and can't get a job, where do you think they go? Home. You will pay for it. So you got to think about that. Number two, educational expectations. Here is why for certain children, the college enrollment and college graduation rate is so low, because we start hedging our bets. We say, well, you decide what you want to do. Here's, my daddy taught me this. I didn't have a choice as to whether I could go from kindergarten to first grade. I couldn't come home at the end of kindergarten. Your vision tells you what you need. You already identify some learning styles. Now your vision, for example, do you envision your child being a leader? Well, that means you need to look for leadership programs. Do you envision your child developing a certain gift or talent? You need to look for those programs. Do you envision your child being a straight A student from kindergarten through 12th grade, and if not straight A, then at least on a roll from kindergarten through 12th grade, that means you would need tutors, you would need coaches who support academics if your child's an athlete, you would need to identify their friends. All of these are steps that you need in order to pursue and to follow your vision. So, Dad, this school thing is not for me, I want to kick it. I knew I was going to first grade. I couldn't come home to the elementary school and say, you know what, Dad, I don't think I need that middle school experience. I knew I was going to middle school. I couldn't come over the middle, in the middle school. What I'm saying to you is that when you say to your children, well, you decide, do you want to go to military, two-year, four-year college? Whatever decision they make will have long-term consequences. And I'm saying as a parent, just have whatever vision. I'm not here to give you your vision, but whatever it is, you have to be clear.